like I was talking to my dad about this. My school is recently starting to build a business institute. They're pushing like, you have to go to college, get a job, work your entire life. It's never teaching you like you could actually be something and create something out of yourself. Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting. And here's the episode. All right, we got a 14 year old on the show today. Youngest guest I've ever had and I've had over 600 episodes. So this is this is exciting. Jake Sujanani, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. 14, man. So you've been in business from how long? Well, so I've always kind of wanted to make money. I really started like, even since I was 12, like I was doing like the pressure wash and whatever. I did window cleaning. Hmm. Um, and then literally last year is when I actually started getting to the online space. So I made like $600, whatever, just doing odd jobs like pressure washing. And then I found out, found out about Amazon affiliate marketing and I blew up on TikTok. Like you can still find the account, 200,000 followers. And hmm. that's when I really started making money online. Wow. So you were 12 when that happened or 13? I was, I was 13 when that all started. Jeez. Middle school? Yeah, middle school I was in eighth grade. <laughs> Killing and it in middle school, man. That yeah. was doing good. It was like um my best month. I did like seven thousand straight from commissions. And then on top of that, I had sponsorships from whatever these Chinese Amazon sellers. Yeah. And that did extremely well. Wow. So from there, did you focus on that or did you switch it up from from Amazon? I completely switched it up. So it was almost a whole community of us. It was like five of the biggest guys on TikTok. It was a whole niche at the time, Amazon deals, and then you just promote your affiliate link. But like I saw that it was dying and I also got banned on TikTok. Like my account got age restricted because mm. I'm 14, right? Um, so I'm like, all right, I need to get into something more long term. Like I really want to build a personal brand. Mm -hmm. Cause at the time, people were just following me for the deals. No one actually cared about me, right? So I saw that it was dying and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna start posting about my myself and my journey to, you know, start making money online. Yeah. Wow. So you're in high school now or still in middle school? Yeah, I'm a freshman now. Okay. And do you plan on going the full four years? Um, Yeah. It's been in my mind to switch to online school. A bunch of different guys who are in sort of my position, like one of my friends is 16 and he switched to online school and he told me it was the best decision he ever made. Mm. But at the same time for me, I don't know how much I just want to be at home all the time, right? Yeah. Like I like interacting at school and stuff. Like as much as like I would say like, you know, I don't like it, you know, the things they teach, but at the end of the day, like, yeah, I'm going to graduate. Like, I don't see why not. There's yeah. no point in not. You probably got kids hitting you up nonstop in school asking for how to no, make money. That's probably the most annoying part. Like, if I was to put a label on the most um, annoying part about all of this is just the people, like, it almost feels like people are always trying to use you or trying to get something out of you, right? Yeah. Like, at school now, it's like, if people are talking to me, it always seems like something related to how I'm making money or, like, how I could teach them, you know, putting them on, whatever. Mm. And... It's just, it, it just kind of gets old, right? You got trust issues. No, literally. That's why <laughs> I, I talked to literally like four or five of my friends that, you know, that I've known since before everything. And, and that's literally it. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Making that money at that age. Cause now you're up to 15 K a month, right? Yeah. 10, 15. <sighs> at that age, that's like being a millionaire. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to use that on at 14? You know? No, literally like that's probably the, it, that's the tricky part about actually making money. Like before you have a car, before, you know, I live in my, my parents' house. Mm -hmm. I don't pay for anything, you know, I eat for free. And really like the only thing I could even spend my money on is just whatever saving and then I buy clothes, whatever, like that's really all you yep. can do. So you're just stacking right now. Are you investing in anything? No, literally like it's just been either sitting in my account or I buy clothes and- Yeah, you shoes. can't even open up a stock account, right? Cause you gotta be 18 for that? No, yeah. I mean, sometimes my dad helps me with different stuff. Like we recently just got my LLC set up. Like I don't think I've ever paid, um a single cent in taxes um, my entire journey doing this. And, um, you know, now we're working on getting the LLC set up. They don't teach you that, man. I remember my first year in business. I was like, what, are, what is this? What is this tax bill I'm getting right now, you know? No, I'm saying a lot of like a lot of my friends in this space run into that thing. It's like, because it's not something that they teach you, like whether it be in school and especially if you don't have older guys guiding you. Like one of my friends is about to get... um destroyed in taxes he had over six figures come straight to his account mm -hmm. he's 16 and he spent all of it like oh. he has twelve thousand in his account now he's gonna have to get on a payment plan no he's done yeah i mean honestly they never teach it in high school even college you have to be in like an accounting class to probably learn about it 
No, yeah, it's just that's another like issue kind of have with school. Like, there's not a big um thing like where they teach about you could be an entrepreneur that you can make money yourself. Like, I was talking to my dad about this. Um, my school is recently starting to build a business institute, but it's after a long time. It always seems like um you're they're pushing like you have to go to college, get a job, work your entire life. Like it's never teaching you like you could actually be something and create something out of yourself. Absolutely. I think you've done well at getting that friend group of other people that are doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's what I try. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Like people at the bottom are the ones who are in competition. People at the top are the ones who are in collaboration. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Because when I was in high school, it was kind of when social media was starting, but it wasn't normal to be in entrepreneurship. So it's kind of looked down on. But now if you're doing it, it's almost like you're you're cool, you know? Yeah, no, it definitely, I wouldn't say it's become a normal thing, but it's definitely become something that's really popular. Like everyone wants to be an influencer. Everyone wants to be famous on social media, whatever it may be. Yeah. And especially now how easy it is to monetize. Like it's the, it's the easiest way to be making money online, just literally posting videos. Absolutely. It's an interesting dynamic for you because you're, you're making more than your teachers. No, yeah. So you're literally. sitting there in class like, why am I even listening to this? Yeah, some of this stuff is stupid. Like, especially like in like these dumb classes, like I take French class. I recently just got a 40 on my quiz <laughs> and it's just, I feel like, I mean, you know, it's language or whatever, but like, I feel like some of the stuff, I, it doesn't really matter. Right. Yeah. Language. I mean, the way they teach it is so slow, dude. I it's took slow. Spanish for four years. I was in honors. I still can't speak it. You know <laughs> what I mean? And that was four years. And if I just went to Mexico for a year, I would be fluent in Spanish. No, literally it's, it's a slow curriculum. And they have you doing like just busy work. Like I feel like school is full of busy work. Homework, busy work. Because they put everyone at the same speed. Mm -hmm. Even though you and I probably learn faster than the average person. I know. Like I feel like that's why this whole online teaching is going to really like become something in the future. Because it's like catering to like your interest and like the speed at which you learn. Like not everyone learns the same. Not everyone thinks the same. Not everyone learns the same speed. That's why some kids excel in school and some kids, you know, fail. 100%, dude. I listen to audiobooks and uh, podcasts at 2 to 2.5x speed. <laughs> and that's like normal for me because I've trained myself. Obviously, I had to start at like 1.5 and then work my way up. But No, I got you. It's like I'm learning twice as fast as the average person. So no, Exactly. You know what I mean? But I want to talk about your Discord. You have your own server, right? Mm -hmm. I recently just launched my own community. Like that ties in. Like I really like how I said like people at the top are collaborating I hate all this stuff with like gatekeeping mm. like people it should be a thing to teach people like how to make money as well because why would I why am I in competition with random like random people like if you support me obviously like I'm going to teach you what I know mm. because at the end of the day it's not me against you it's both of us we're both trying to get somewhere we're both obviously trying to make money we're trying to become rich in the future so I launched my Discord and I basically just teach every way that I've made money. Mm. And literally, as soon as I figure something out or I come across something that has made me a ton of money, I instantly share it. Like, I don't believe in all of this, like, yeah, let's wait until it's, you know, oversaturated or let's gatekeep this method. Because honestly, it's just like, it's just stupid. A lot of people have that scarcity mindset, I think, especially in dropshipping. No one ever wants to talk about their methods or their products. Yeah, I know. It's stupid. Like, like they think it's a huge competition with all of this, but it's really not. There's so much money in the world. There's so many people in the world. Like people have such a fixed mindset when it comes to even clients. Like in my short form content agency, like people were like, Jake, why would you um, tell exactly how you do your outreach? Why would you tell um, your method of marketing if, if it's going to limit your clients? And I'm like, there's so many creators, especially now we're literally in an influencer bull run. Yeah. Yeah, short form's popping off right now, dude. I just posted some clips when I interviewed Grant Cardone. Each one has like a million views. No, it's crazy. On Instagram, it's it's nuts, dude. I mean, I don't even think people watch long form as much as short form these days. No, that's why it's really hard like to see the direction of everything because before like, you know, TikTok and all the short form game um, popped up, long form was, was the way that you're going to succeed in um, social media. But now it's kind of tricky. Like I even I was even struggling. Like, should I continue just growing my short form or should I get into long form? And like I recently just uploaded a bunch of YouTube videos mm. because I feel like it's how you get longevity in it. Because um the whole reason of posting and growing a personal brand is you build a deeper connection to your audience. And that's you know inevitably how you're gonna sell to them. 
like you you have to get them to trust you right and you can't really build a connection in 30 seconds um compared to one that's a 10 minute video agreed yeah you definitely need both i think short forms kind of like the top of funnel where you bring mm -hmm. everyone in with mm -hmm. like clickbaity clips or whatever that are 30 seconds to a minute and then if the long form's good they'll they'll stay yeah exactly like it, it's it's fast too like long form it could take months for your video to blow up but if you just post clips on it like you get instant results in that and then you could just funnel that into your long form absolutely what's been some of your most viral videos some of my most viral videos um it was on drop shipping and my smma stuff mm. those have always been killing it um and then i blew up off of just my journey like i would just document every single little thing i did you know whether it was a loss whether it was a win mm. i first blew up on tiktok maybe five, six months ago, first video got a million views Damn. and I was averaging like 400K views a video. That's crazy. Then I got banned. So wait, how old do you have to be on TikTok? Well, there's no real age limit. I mean, they say you have to be over 13, but the thing that I really ran into is people reporting because mm. that's really how you're going to get taken down for being underage. And I mean, there's a lot of envious people in this world. There's a lot of people who, who, um, want to bring others down if they're doing better and 99% of the time when I get banned it's because people report me for being under 13. Wow. And how it works is I, there's nothing I could really appeal to like send to appeal. Like if I put in my passport for example saying you know I'm 14 um it wouldn't matter because they implemented a new um guideline recently like if you're under 16 um your videos won't get pushed to the for you page you can't have comments you won't even have a link in your bio. Damn. So it, it was just not even worth it to appeal. So it's just like. You're going to have to get a fake ID, man. <laughs> <laughs> Say you're like 17 or something. Man. I tried. I put in my brother's, but um, he was 15 at the time. I put in my brother's permit. Uh, and, you know, he I wasn't just, 16. No. So you got brothers? Yeah, I have an older brother. Okay. Does he do this type of stuff too? My brother is big in soccer. He's actually, um, he's moving to Spain for boarding camp or Damn. boarding school. So he's soccer. nice. Now he's good at soccer, yeah. Damn, a 16? Yeah, these kids are starting younger and younger. No, literally. Did you play soccer too? or No. You, no sports? No, I don't play any sports. Just business, baby. Business is a sport. <laughs> For real, though. Like, I see business as competition and, you know, getting to the top. No, yeah, literally. Mark Cuban says it's a sport. It's like the biggest sport in the world. It's 24-7. Literally, yeah. No breaks. Well, I'm similar to you where I, I like to collab and stuff. I don't get jealous. I mean, when I see success in the podcast space, I'm like, that's sick. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's stupid when people, especially in the short form game, like with this whole community of like these finance influencers, it's a lot of them get mad when you steal video ideas because if a video goes viral once, it's going to go viral again. Mm. And people, everyone knows this, but when you steal someone else's content idea or even their hook, one of my friends, um, Noah, was just telling me how another creator was mass reporting his account because he stole one of his video ideas in his hook. Wow. I'm just like, it's so stupid because it, it's if it's gonna go viral, you why would you not want the the other person to succeed? Like it's not like it's, social media is not a competition. Yeah. Like it's not like someone is better than someone else. Like I know creators who have less followers than me and who make more money. It's just it's stupid to to compete over people's attention. It's short from content. People watch hundreds of videos a day. Yeah, that's so dumb. I mean, people repost my podcast podcast clips all the time, and I love it. Yeah, exactly. And if anything, if you have your own distinct like way of speaking, your distinct way of scripting your videos people are going to tie it back into you. So if anything, it's it's a better look for your brand. Like people reposting your clips, like, yeah, you could take that as, oh, yeah, they're taking money from me, taking my audience. But if anything, they're they're pushing you out more. Yeah, for real. I mean, I got the background here. So if you want to repost my clips, it's, <laughs> it's right there, guys. I feel free, Literally. you know. And some of them get a ton of views. And, like, people take those down and they're like, you're stealing my stuff. But who? in the it's long stupid. run, it's good for you. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely good. More eyeballs, more ways you can monetize, in my opinion. Easily. Um, so you're doing 15k a month now. Do you have any financial goals, or you're just rock riding with it? I don't know. Like, that's one thing I really should plan on my goals. All of my like mentors were telling me, Jake, you need to write down your goals for 2024. And I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna get around to doing. And I like, you know, it's March 1st now, and you know, I haven't written down a single thing. But wow. In my mind, I know what I want. Like, I want, I want an AMG G63s and a Hellcat. Just bought the G63. Are you serious? Yeah, in December. It's a good tax write-off. So far. Such yeah, a sick Because you can, it's over 6,000 pounds. So you could write off the whole, or 80% now, I think. That's insane. Yeah. 
yeah, I'll teach you some stuff. You got to do it before. Uh, so in December, you would do it to write off all your profit. Because huh. you're going to make, I don't know what your margins are, but say you profit 100K, that would be like paying 40, 50K in taxes. So instead, you could just buy a car. Oh, I got you. Yeah, my dad has been a big help, like teaching me about all this stuff too. Because, you know, I am young and I don't really know anything about anything as far as, you know, actual business. I mean, I really just make videos online. Yeah. And becoming like a like aware of all this stuff is, is crucial. It's huge. Do you have a business mentor yet? Mm, I have three mentors right now. Oh, well, one big one. Mm-hmm. I had two other ones in the past. And one guy, AJ Yabbit, um, he's not big on social media. I just recently helped him go viral. Um, he does, he runs a high ticket sales agency and he's just been a huge inspiration to me. Mm. Like he used, he helped me make my first $50,000 in this. Damn. Like the first month I worked with him, he made us, he made me $40,000 in rent. a month. The first month I ever worked with him. Holy crap. What does he teach? Um, he runs high ticket sales. So he put appointment setters, um, and closers in my DMs, posting CTAs. And funnel people, it's like my high ticket mentorship. Oh, nice. Which was like a thousand dollars at the time, um, five hundred thousand dollars at the time. And are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? We'll click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below, and here's the episode, guys. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I did not even make a lot from it because. I put myself in a really bad deal. Mm. Like, it's, I didn't really think about the percentages. Like, I had a partner at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I was also giving the, you know, AJ team a cut. Yeah. So, it, I, I definitely didn't make, like, a ton, maybe, like, 10000 off of that. But it was definitely an experience. And it just shows, like, he, he's smart and he's taught me a bunch about, even helps me, like, with my workout routines. Like, nice. he's really huge inspiration. That's, that's cool, man. Yeah, high-ticket closing is such a good skill, dude. It's crazy. I mean, you yeah, can make sales. six figures a year as, like, a teenager, as a high-ticket closer easily there's so many ways to make money online like everyone thinks there's one just way to make money online like what's the best way what's the easiest way like every single way to make money works like drop shipping is never dead e-commerce can't die um smma works content automation works every single side hustle you hear on the internet works for some people it's just choosing what you want and sticking with it yeah, and I think effort is is needed, and also the mentors definitely needed yeah. to save you time and money. It's super hard to succeed without having someone guiding you. Like you could only get so far just figuring stuff out on your own. Yeah, like investing in yourself and your knowledge is the biggest thing. Like that's why I don't know why people hate on courses. I mean, I know some gurus sell bad courses, and you know, obviously it puts a bad rep on it. But courses just help you mm. expand your knowledge. Like if you really want to do something, if you want to learn more about e commerce, like you're going to have to invest in some sort of mentor or or guidance to learn more. I used to watch a course a day when I was in college, dude. It was nuts. I watched every single guru you could think of. I've seen their course. No, yeah. And usually multiple, like Ty Lopez, seen all his, Sam Ovens, Alex Beck. I don't know if Alex Becker had one. Dan DeSilva, all those guys, bro. That's how I started because when you're broke, the knowledge is what, what gets you to that next level. No, exactly. Yeah, courses are game changer. They do get a lot of heat. I understand why, because now they're pretty expensive. A lot of them are complete, <laughs> to be honest. Mm-hmm. So I could see why. But if you really do your research on the course and the person teaching it, you could join a really good one. No, exactly. Like you just got to find someone who's actually credible, which is hard. Like it's easy to fake being rich. Like it's easy to fake, you know, a lifestyle. But if you just really like watch this person's content, Taking what they're saying, you'll know if someone can provide you actual value if they're providing you free value in their video. Mm, Yeah, Alex Ramosi, right? Yeah, That's the goat right there. Um, So do you just work as soon as you get home until you sleep pretty much? No, honestly, I don't even do a lot of work. Mm. Um, You know, I do do what I need to do, you know, but I, I do relax a lot of the time. I mean, not majority of the time, but it's... One big misconception is that you need to be grinding 24-7. You need to sit at your laptop for 16 hours at a time. It's it's just honestly just stupid because, like, you just have to work smart. Allocate your time correctly, and you'll get to where you need to be. Yeah, I agree because there's times in my life when I was younger where I I would grind all the time, and I never gave myself time to think and plan, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's needed, or else you'll get caught up in the grunt work. Yeah, exactly. Like, sometimes you could just be doing hard work for nothing. Yeah. Like you actually have to be working smart and just because 
what's the point if you're not getting any results, right? If you're just working on building like a store for 16 hours, well, what's the point, right? If, it, if you're not going to, if it doesn't yield any results. 100%. So is coaching your main focus right now, coaching other people? No, my main thing right now has been uh, my new agency, which I dropped like two-ish months ago. And it, I just took a completely different approach because time back into the whole thing, like people want to see results. Creators want to see results. Mm. Like I run an editing agency, you could say, like I edit people's videos. I help other entrepreneurs, like six, seven figure entrepreneurs go viral on Instagram. And a lot of people, the reason people fail is because of two things. They sell it wrong or they have no social proof. These guys aren't going to respond to you if you have no followers on your page. And they don't care about how their video looks. Like, these guys could care less how crazy the editing is. They want to see results. Like, mm. if you're not giving them results, there's no point in them working with you. So I took a different approach, and I'm like, I guarantee you 10,000 views the first video. Wow, the first video. First video. And the way I do that is pretty much, it's like a shout-out type method. Because, I don't know if you know this, but if you repost someone else's reel on your story, even if they don't click on see reel, it counts as a view. What? It's crazy. So Yo. if you're reposting someone else's video, like I don't know how many um Shares. views you get on your story. Yeah, like 50k. 50k. If you repost one of my videos, I'll get 50,000 views. Dude, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. That's and crazy. It's organic as well. It boosts the video. So one of my first clients, I was just testing it with. Um, I repost his first video. He got that 10,000 views because I get roughly like 15,000 views on my story, mm -hmm. and then his video blew up to a million. It's at 800k or a million right now. Dude, that makes a lot of sense because when I do collab posts with my bigger guests and they restory it, those always get way more views. No, exactly. Yeah. Wow. I did not know that. I thought you had to be on for like three seconds or something. No, literally, if they just see, if they literally just see your story, it counts as a view, which is, which is crazy. I don't know if Instagram is ever going to fix that. I don't think they really will. I hope they don't. Makes my numbers look better. <laughs> it's such a, <laughs> it's a crazy like way of selling it. And I was literally just sitting I don't even know how I thought of it. It's probably the smartest thing I've ever thought of in my entire life. <laughs> Cause it's such a different way of um presenting it because you're you're giving these guys results, you're guaranteeing results. Dude. Yeah. Cause these guys aren't even pulling a thousand views. So the fact that you come in there and say, yo, I'll get you 10K on the first video. Exactly. And if you buy a bigger pages, like bigger theme pages, yeah, repost their videos and now you're guaranteeing a hundred thousand of a video, mm -hmm. you get them on retainer because you know they're gonna need you to get views. Yep. Um, you get them on retainer like whatever, three, five thousand dollars a month. That's how I started buying off those big pages, man. No, literally. They were so cheap back in the day, like when I was in college, like six, seven years ago. Now they're expensive. Like Dude. I've recently started buying a few different like 100,000 follower theme pages. They're like $1,000, $700. Yeah. Even more than that. I'm like. Yeah, they're getting up there. And I used to be able to get shout outs dirt cheap. Like on Worldstar, I could get on there for like 2,500 back in the day. No, literally like at wealth is so expensive. Oh yeah. I they used to get that like one dirt cheap too. $5,000 for a story post. <sighs> for a story? For a story. Holy crap. I know the kid that runs that. That's crazy. Yeah. He used to charge like 500. Dude, no, they're expensive now. Yeah. And uh, I think Daquan sold for like a hundred million bucks or something. Did you see that? I have I didn't see that, but I know a lot of these guys make a lot of money from these theme pages. AJ's partner, Adi, mm -hmm. he first was making money. He was 16. He sold the Steam page. I think I had like 1 million followers or more than that. And he sold it for 100K. Jeez. At 16. Yeah. So I, I know crazy. a few kids that have sold for six figures. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. If you if you have the eyeballs and the right product, you'll make it back. Easily. Yeah. Um, are you all in on IG right now in terms of the social media platforms? Yeah. I've been banned on tiktok like seven different times <laughs> each account over fifty thousand followers like wow like i've been trying to get back on it but it's it's such a different game now and instagram instagram hasn't even been giving me a hard time like they're really calm when it comes to um like the whole rules and stuff it's the only thing is just um people pay to get you banned like i literally got banned um yesterday because there's a whole community like banning these finance influencers like myself yeah and um, I just got my account back this morning, but it's just it's just stupid, dude. I get texted daily about that, actually. Yeah, I know. it's it's dumb. Yeah, because the WhatsApp chat of all the previous podcast guests, like someone in there daily is like, "Yo, I got banned." <laughs> like, I know, it's so dumb. <laughs> it's so crazy, but uh, I don't get that model. Like, so they basically ban you, and then what? Well, so the whole goal—I honestly don't even really understand it myself. But I guess they pay guys make livings off of banning people, like. Mm. They charge a couple hundred dollars, um, and whoever it may be pays to get me banned. Um, 
and, and it's that simple. Like, I don't really understand the goal behind it at all. But, you know, obviously some people are envious. Some people um, don't want to see others succeed, whatever it may be. Um, From what I've seen, it's okay. So this is what I've seen a few times. It's guys in like a third world country. So like India or yeah. something. So like a hundred bucks there is actually a lot of money. And they'll send you a DM saying, yo, I'm banning your account. Here's my number if you want to get it back. It's like this amount of price, like 100, 500 bucks, whatever. And then they get banned. And then I think they take the money and then reinstate their account. No, yeah. I've I've actually seen that. One of my friends was like the guy who unbanned his account because I don't, for whatever reason, he got banned and he paid someone else to unban it. Mm. And the guy ended up banning his account again to get more money for it. Wow, to get that's unbanned. nuts. Yeah, usually the guys unbanning are the ones banning too. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like it's kind of smart. Like, it's i hate making money unethically like i, I believe in karma so yeah i, I mean just, it's definitely gonna get back in them but as yeah. far as like the short term like it's it's it's, it's not a hustle a like yeah. it's definitely a hustle and especially in a country like that they're actually probably balling out there with that money no 100 percent. i mean there's no longevity in it but as far as you know some short-term money like a couple hundred bucks yeah whatever you travel a lot right now no literally i sit in my room all day like <laughs> for the past couple months I've literally just been sitting in my room, whatever, working on different things, um, creating content. This is the first time, like, um, I've ever really traveled wow. for for this type of stuff. Like, that's why it's so kind of surreal even being here right now. You're at the wind too, bro. That's like the I nicest know. hotel in Vegas. It's crazy. Like, I never thought, like, posting videos on TikTok and Instagram would ever really get me anywhere. Like, I knew it'd make me some money, but I never actually thought it would like amount to anything like real and like tangible. And it's I don't know. It's just so crazy to me still. Well, you went about it smart, man, because a lot of people post and they're broke, but you, you figured out a way to monetize it. Yeah, I know. It's it, it's it's easy to not monetize and just post for fun because, I mean, I post because I genuinely love content creation, but, um, you know, like I said, AJ is the one who really helped me monetize my stuff. Yeah, dude, I know people with millions of followers that are broke, so. No, yeah, my friend, the mindset guy, I don't know if you've ever seen him. Asian guy does the um, street interviews. Street interviews. I've seen a ton of those. I don't know. Yeah. He is like a million on Instagram, a million on TikTok. He was making no money. Now he's doing super well. He's making a ton of money helping other um, content creators go viral because mm. he, he kind of does a similar method I do. But um, no, yeah, a million followers and he was making $1,000 a month. I think it was from sponsorships. Damn, that's nothing, dude. No, For literally. a million followers. So what was that switch for him to start making money? Um, He's talked to me like we became friends and i connected him with aj actually mm. i know i'm kind of plugging him a lot but he genuinely like changed my life and my whole perspective on all of this stuff damn and he met aj aj helped him monetize helped him build out a good offer um and yeah that's dope do you do you and aj live in the same area no uh, aj lives in like south carolina or something what the hell yeah south I, carolina I have no idea i did not expect that no yeah i've never heard of someone living there in our space no, yeah, it, I feel like everyone is kind of relatively like in the same space, like whether it be like Florida or like L.A. or Miami's, but yeah. Miami, L.A., Vegas, maybe New York, sometimes somewhere in Texas, but yeah, it's it's all the same places. Yeah, exactly. Do you ever want to move to like a big city? Mm, I really want to move out as soon as possible. Like, I don't, I've been reading a few things and it's like changing your scenery can really change like your whole perspective on everything. And I feel like it's hard to really stay motivated in wanting to achieve something when you when you don't really have like um whether it's like a burning desire or like a need to. Hmm. Like, you know, I live in my parents' house, so like sometimes I get rid like I get comfortable way too often. Right. Like complacent where I am like, you know, I could take the couple weeks off, you know, not post any content, you know. I really hmm. have no worries. Like I, I made a decent amount last month. So I could I could chill out. Yeah, when I moved from Jersey, man, because that's like a family state. It's not really like a business entrepreneurial state. That's where I grew up. And I came to LA and Vegas, my business 10 x No, yeah. It's just who you're around. And I mean, dude, it's like, I don't know what state you're in, but in Jersey, I got made fun of for doing business and entrepreneurship. Like mm -hmm. people didn't support that. But when you move to like LA or Vegas, you just surround yourself with like-minded people. Yeah, like surrounding yourself with people like that, you'll become one of them. You'll want to you achieve more like, I seen a bunch of people who moved down to Miami and you see a bunch of these nice cars. It gives them that drive and motivation too. Like I live in like a pretty quiet neighborhood mm. in Florida. Um, I go to a nice school, but it's not a lot of kids like me around in my area that do similar stuff. Yeah. 
Oh, you're in a private school? Yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a pretty decent private school. Nice. Is that have you ever done public school or is, is it always No, been... I've been in private school my entire life. Damn, your parents know what they're doing, man. <laughs> you never had to go through the weird <laughs> I'd went through. No. <laughs> you probably heard horror stories though. Public yeah. school is not not a fun place. Yeah, no, I hear it's bad. Yeah. I'm only doing private or homeschool for my kids. I mean, for real. I mean, dude, you don't even want to know what they're teaching there. So any plans for college or this has actually been on my mind for a while now. Like, there's like this big almost like um, misconception going around, like in this whole like teen entrepreneur space, like on social media, like school and like college is like super stupid. But I honestly like this one guy I talked to really changed my like mindset and like opinion on it because I don't know why I wouldn't go. Like, if I'm learning more business, if I'm learning, you know, just things that will help me in the future, like why would I? Why would I not go? Like. Hmm. Um, I know people go there and learn what they need and then they drop out, right? Yeah. But I only think it's really stupid to not go is if you're learning something stupid. Like if you're learning philosophy or like history or something, yeah, you're just wasting money, right? <laughs> but if you're, I feel like if I'm learning like business and stuff, like it could actually really help me in the future. You'd have to do your research on the, like the best business schools and make sure they're modern. Cause when I went to learn right. business, they were teaching you how to like run newspaper ads and cold call and stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it's hard, like adapting to this new age and finding people who know that. Yeah. I mean, by that time, dude, you might be making millions too. So it might be a totally different decision when you're 18. Mm, yeah. Cause you're only 14 making 15 K a month. So by then you might be making a hundred K a month. Hopefully I'm hopefully. Hopefully more. I think you could do it, man. I mean, you're running ads now too, right? Now I've just been doing straight organic because I used to do paid ads like on TikTok and stuff, but I've seen organic is always going to be the best. Hmm. Like even as far as outreaching, you could tell when someone has a fake social media following. Yeah. But like when you see someone who actually has a genuine following um, and have grown their account organically, it especially what I'm doing, I'm teaching other people, helping other entrepreneurs go viral. Hmm. It just works out better. You can't beat organic, but I think ads are like supplemental. It mm -hmm. should never be the main focus. Like some no, people yeah. only focus on ads and yeah, you can't really trust those guys. Yeah, yeah, you know? stupid. Uh, Jake, it's been fun, man. Where, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on YouTube, Jake Sujanani. You can find me on Instagram, Jake Sujanani. Um, I'll have a TikTok back up and running soon. Just keep an eye out on my story post. Cool. We'll link it all in the video. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys, as always. I'll see you next time.